In the opening scene, an average height, dark-skinned, and beautiful Sarah angrily alights from the vehicle of the guy who just dropped her off. They just had a date, and he can't even remember her name. She walks the rest of the way home while warning her friend Lizzie over the phone, not to let her do something like this annoying date again. Her friend laughs, heartily listening to Sarah's provocation. The ladies soon start chatting and Sarah expresses her desire to just find a decent guy instead of always meeting the type of men she always comes in contact with. Sarah suddenly realizes that time has gone by and her house gate will be locked soon. She starts racing down the street. Unfortunately for her, the gate was just locked. The gatekeeper known as Kabaru is known for his lousy and troublesome attitude. He makes a fuss and refuses to open the gate despite that he saw her coming before locking it. Kabaru insists that she follows through the front gate as he's not ready to lose his job. Seeing that he won't budge, Sarah walks a few steps and squats when she suddenly gets the idea to jump through the fence. She tactically checks out the wall, and she's certain she can jump over it. In a few minutes, she's able to get over the wall, but her dress is stuck to the iron on the burglary. As she struggles to free herself, Mr. Michael, a neighbor, comes questioning what she's doing. He brings out his phone and takes pictures of her. Sarah tries to explain herself and why she's stuck there, also pleading with him to delete the pictures of her. He decides to help her get down, but she keeps insisting that he delete the pictures and she's willing to do anything in return. Michael decides to delete her pictures and then shows her the phone. Sarah sees several random photos of other women and she now assumes he must be a pervert. She angrily walks away from him without even saying thank you. On getting home, she updates Lizzie about all she experienced in the last few minutes, from the Gateman to the Michael situation. Lizzie is amused with the situation and suggests they open up a bit more instead of labeling every guy a pervert, else they will be single forever, but Sarah thinks otherwise. She isn't ready to lower her standards for anyone or end up with a loser. The ladies stay on the phone, chatting a bit longer, before finally bidding each other goodnight. The next morning, Sarah recites her self-affirmation words to herself while standing in front of her mirror before heading out for the day. She stops at the market to pick some materials she can sew with. While she strolls around looking for nice fabrics, a text pops up on her phone. She immediately squats trying to get herself together. The market men and women surround her requesting to know what is wrong with her. Getting home, she seems distraught, but she tries to put herself together as she recites her usual line, just to remind herself that she's great and a phenomenal woman. Later, at her mini boutique, some clients come to purchase a few pieces of clothes she made. Mrs. Joy, one of her regulars, walks in to pick up some clothes for a date with her husband later tonight. She notices that Sarah is in a not so good mood, but Sarah assures her it's nothing serious. Mrs. Joy walks into the changing room after picking a few clothes and Sarah wonders how come she's so excited to go on date nights with her husband every single time, despite that they've been married for 15 years. She comes out looking ravishing in one of Sarah's pieces, and she can't help but ask a second time if Sarah is okay. They bid each other buys after payment has been made for the wear purchased. Sarah packs up for the day and rushes back home. Fortunately, Kabaru is about to lock up the gate as usual, even though he can see her coming. She refuses to give him another opportunity to humiliate her, so she quickly runs through the gate before he can shut it close. Sarah laments as she walks into the estate because her clothes get torn while she is trying to rush in. She spots a fellow walking towards her direction, so she quickly rushes to hide, in a bid to avoid having any conversations with him. Fred, who has already seen her, walks over to where she's hiding and offers her his suit to cover up the damage on her dress. They introduce themselves and Sarah complains about Kabaru, and his incessant behaviors. Cabru walks past them singing and walking dramatically, causing them to laugh at his behavior. Sarah receives the card Fred hands her and promises to return his blazer after dry cleaning it. She makes him promise not to tell anyone about the incident with her clothes before they bid each other goodnight and head for their different apartments. Sarah gets into her house. She calls her friend, and the both of them soon start gossiping about a dramatic incident that happened at Lizzie's office earlier in the day. Lizzie briefs her friend on how her boss got caught cheating by his wife. The ladies laugh heartily as Lizzie narrates the entire incident. The following morning, Sarah steps out of the house on her way to work when Cabru stops her to inform her that he knows someone who can fix her clothes, which got torn the previous night. She sighs because his solution is the last thing on her mind at the moment. However, she tells him not to bother as she intends to sort it out by herself. At Fred's office, he arrives a bit late for a meeting with a client. Thankfully, his receptionist helped him to treat the guests nicely before his arrival. He praises her gestures 
and awards her with a little something before joining the client waiting in his office. Sarah is over at her workplace contemplating how best to appreciate Fred's kindness to her the previous night. She puts a call through to him, but he doesn't take it up because he's still in his meeting. Immediately after the client leaves, Fred calls the strange number back. After the pleasantries, Sarah offers to come drop off his blazer later in the day, but he suggests she makes it tomorrow as he would like to take her out on a dinner date. She abruptly brings the call to an end while chuckling. Fred wonders why the call got disconnected, so he calls her back and Sarah picks up. She blames it on the network providers, and they continue the conversation. Meanwhile, Lizzie walks into her friend's store and finds Sarah blushing and talking excitedly on the phone. As she excitedly jumps around, she isn't expecting to see Lizzie there. She almost misses a step in fright seeing her friend right before her. Lizzie is super excited that her friend is going on a date. She dances around for a minute before asking to know more about this guy who has her friend feeling all sorts of feelings. At Fred's office, his receptionist Sonia makes passing gestures at him because she listened all through his call and she's certain it's either her boss is falling in love or he is in love. Sonia makes some recommendations of some nice places her boss can take the lady. Fred laughs shyly, asking her to mind her business. After the excitement goes down, Sarah worries about Fred especially if he's a horrible person pretending to be nice and sweet. Lizzie doesn't share her point of view as she looks around the store for some nice clothes Sarah can wear for the date. She urges her to give Fred a try before assuming things about him. She picks up an outfit and forcefully pays for it so her friend can wear it on the date. Lizzie spots the male blazer and wonders when Sarah starts making male dresses. She bursts out laughing hard as she's beginning to get ideas in her head. She bids her friend goodbye and reminds her to keep her updated with the outcome of her date. Later in the day, Sarah is preparing to close for the day when a customer runs into the store, pleading to get just five minutes so she can pick up a few dresses. She puts a call through to her brother, who is to come to pay for the clothes she picks. A few minutes later, Michael walks into the store, and immediately, Sarah spots him. She tries hiding, but there is nowhere to go as she's the one receiving payments. Michael brings out his card to pay for the dresses, and then suddenly bursts into a fit of laughter. He calls her fence girl as he recalls the incident the other day. Sarah feels embarrassed, but she ignores him and concentrates on doing her job. She spitefully informs him that she owns the place, so he should quit thinking she's the regular salesperson at a boutique. After the payment has been completed, Michael walks out laughing, while his sister apologizes on his behalf for his rude behavior. The same evening, Sarah prepares to go on her date. She wears the dress Lizzie purchased for her from her store, and recites her affirmation, because she's beginning to feel nervous and excited about the date. After some time, she alights a cab, which she hires to take her to the venue of her date with Fred. Coincidentally, he's waiting just outside the entrance. He admires how beautiful she looks as she walks towards him, carrying his dry, clean suit with her. They exchange pleasantries, and he requests to quickly drop the suit in his car before they go into their date venue. The duo spends some time in the gallery, walking around and checking out the artworks in it, while debating over some of the works and other things. After the date, Sarah questions why he brought her to a gallery, as it's a bit boring plus, it didn't even take long for their date to be over. She requests to know what they will do next and Fred, who feels a bit disappointed that he didn't impress her offers to take them elsewhere, even though she might be a bit overdressed for what he has in mind. The evening turns dark by the time they arrive at a game center. The scenery of the place and activity seem lively, and they engage in a whole lot of exciting activities and games lasting a few hours, before taking a walk around the arena. Sarah confesses that she had so much fun, she holds on to a teddy as they chat. Fred inquires to know what she thinks about him. Out of the blue, he asks what she likes in a man, and her answer dazzles him. He wonders why she would only want a kind man and nothing else. Fred suspects it must have had something to do with her ex. Sarah smiles and excuses herself to go use the ladies' bathroom briefly. She soon comes out of the restroom and sees Fred wrapping his arms around a lady. She looks at him disgustingly. Then she instantly deletes his contact and walks away, while he's struggling to reach her to no avail. In a few minutes, Sarah arrives at the estate where she lives. Unfortunately, Cabaru has closed the gate already. She pleads with him to open it as it is too late for her to use the big gate, and it is far away from there. After getting no response from him, she walks away in exhaustion when Michael drives towards her. He gets out of the car and makes a joke of her before revealing that he has a key to the gate. Before now, he had a special arrangement with Cabaru who gave him a spare key to access the gate whenever he came home late. Sarah walks through the gate slightly pissed at him for calling her fence girl. She warns him to quit calling her that 
and bid him good night. Getting to her apartment, Sarah takes off her jewelry and is about to change her dress when she receives a text. She opens it and finds a somewhat threatening message from this unknown sender, who seems to be someone from her past. She sits on her bed crying her eyes out as she wonders what's going on with her. The next day, while Sarah is busy arranging some clothes in her store, Michael walks in with a lady behind him. He calls her fence girl once again, and she replies in a rather not-so-friendly way, and the lady questions her attitude toward her customers. She apologizes to her, and the conversation soon switches to her clothes with Sarah, showing her some samples of what she does. The lady seems pretty impressed with Sarah's work, so she selects a few designs and hands over the sample book back before heading out. After she leaves, Michael demands an apology and a thank you for helping Sarah twice. She reluctantly gives in to his demands, and he reveals that the lady is a client of his, and he's making a catalog for her agency. He informs them that he had someone who could provide customs for the models, which is why he brought her to her store to make her choice. Sarah feels there's definitely something he has to gain, and he wouldn't just be doing her a favor simply because he loves her designs. She simply listens to him talk all he wants until Mrs. Joy comes into the store, and she pleasantly greets Michael, indicating that they are quite acquainted with each other. Michael drops his card with Sarah so she can reach him for discussions regarding the business offer he brought to her. After Michael leaves, Mrs. Joy reveals that he's one of the photographers she respects, and he does shoots for fashion magazines and models. Sarah didn't know that there was more to this troublesome person called Michael. She informs Mrs. Joy of the offer he made to her before she walked in. The latter congratulates her and gives her a piece of advice to keep her safe as Michael could be a good boy and a bad boy at the same time. At Fred's office, he can't concentrate at work because he has been worried about Sarah's sudden disappearance and refusal to pick up his calls. He worries deeply especially as he doesn't even know her address, so he can go look for her at her house. He decides to head home since nothing seems to be going as he desires. Sonia notices the worried look on his face. She asks what could be bothering him and Fred shares the cause of his lack of concentration. He informs her that he needs to get home, and she can shut down when she's done working. Days later, Saraha agrees to work with Michael, and the duo are together working with the models. She styles them, while he takes their pictures. One of the models seems to love Sarah's designs, so she hands her a card, so she can come to check out some other beautiful items at her boutique. After the model leaves, the mysterious person texting her sends a message again like he normally does. Sarah sighs in frustration and replies to his message, asking him to leave her be. She drops the phone and tries to calm herself down a bit. After the photoshoot session is over, Michael decides to have a little chat with Sarah before they head home, but he notices that she's not her usual self. He wants to know what the problem could be, but she refuses to say. Instead, she requests he book her a cab that will take her home. Minutes later, he accompanies her to the and pays for the fare despite her refusal. Just as Sarah's cab is driving out of the building, Fred drives in to see his friend. The guys exchange pleasantries, and he asks about the person heading out. He suspects it must be one of Michael's numerous girls, but he confesses that it's just a business partner of his. They walk into the building, and as they drink, Michael can see that something is wrong with his pal. Fred shares his story with Sarah, and how she's been ghosting him. Now, he has lost concentration in everything because he likes her, and he can't seem to find her. Michael makes fun of his situation, and teases him for catching feelings so soon already. Yet he doesn't know anything about this girl. He suggests Fred seek Cabaroo for help since she lives in the same estate as theirs. But he thinks that will be too desperate, even though he is desperate. On second thought, he buys the idea and reveals that he'll seek Cabaroo's help after work the next day. Michael laughs hysterically at the funny expressions on Fred's face as he continues to joke about his friend's plight. Sarah gets home, takes off her shoes, and drops the bag she's carrying. As she walks towards the stairs, a familiar voice calls out to her, and she almost misses a step in shock. She begins to walk backwards step by step as her heart races and fear sets in, while coming face to face with the person. The following day, Fred is at his office with his client, Mr. Adeshola, discussing a few things. Mr. Adeshola notices Fred's uneasiness as he constantly checks the time. He suspects that he must be having a meeting with a lady. Fred laughs and clarifies the reason for his uneasiness. He calls for Sonia to come take the documents with him, but Mr. Adeshola makes an absurd request. He requests that Fred give him Sonia, as he has always liked the lady for her hard work and professional behavior. Fred tells him that Sonia is not an object to be passed from one person to another. He gets the message, so he laughs and apologizes for making such a request. Fred finds a way to locate Sarah's apartment. 
After knocking, Lizzie unexpectedly opens the door, but she isn't wearing a friendly face. She bounces him off and shuts the door in his face. She gets back in to inform Sarah that Fred has left. She opens the door to her friend's room and tries to speak in favor of Fred, but Sarah refuses to listen. She is almost on the verge of tears as she laments about how her ex treated her, even though he doesn't look like someone who can hurt her, and how he used to tell her she's ugly and weak. Sarah feels that no matter how many times she reads the affirmations on her mirror, it feels as if things are not going to change. Sarah gets up angrily with her swollen face. She pulls out the affirmation notes hanging on her mirror. Lizzie stops her and asks her to read out the affirmations out loud and confidently, until she believes every word of it. She stands by her friend encouraging her as she reads out the words while crying. She gives Sarah an assuring hug, and the duo burst out laughing. Fred hangs around Sarah's apartment, and he looks frustrated sitting in his car when a phone call from a client comes in. He almost chases the caller away with his business proposition, but he suddenly apologizes and asks that they meet at his house since he won't be coming to work during the weekend. After a few minutes, Lizzie walks across the street and gets into a cab waiting for her. Fred waits for her to leave before going back to knock on Sarah's door. He is utterly shocked to see Sarah's swollen face after she opens the door. She tries to shoo him off, but he insists on staying as he wonders what could have been the reason for her swollen face. He follows behind, urging her to speak to him, but Sarah ends up crying her heart out while he comforts her until she falls asleep. Two days later, Michael walks into Sarah's store requesting to have a conversation with her, but she keeps pushing him off. He takes off the dark glasses she's putting on. He feels she's probably not seeing him, but to his surprise, the glasses are to hide her swollen eyes. Sarah demands he minds his business and stops intruding. Michael feels a bit triggered, and that's the exact reason he doesn't like mixing business with pleasure. He decides to stick to the business that brought him. Sarah doesn't understand why he's being so nice to her. She blurts out that she won't sleep with him, so he should quit pretending to be a nice person. He laughs mockingly and lashes back at her while restraining himself as much as possible. He advises her to try separating her personal life from business and make sure the guy who messed up her face never gets away with hurting her. The next day, they continued with their business agreement. They collaborate to work on the photo shoot and they are having at the beach side. Sarah takes a break and walks behind Michael intending to speak with him, but he's chastising his sister for drinking too much. She apologizes for her outburst the previous day. He notices that she covers up her injuries with makeup quite well. He forgives her and offers her listening ears if she wants to talk about what happened. Sarah assures him that she's fine and thanks him for allowing her to work on his set. The duo sorts out their issue amicably and he leaves her a word of advice before joining his set. After the session, he drives Sarah back home. She spots Fred discussing with someone by the street. She quickly tries to hide inside the vehicle causing Michael to wonder what's going on with her. She confesses that the man standing with Fred is the one who battered her. This gets him angry, and he parks his car ignoring her pleas not to do anything. Michael rushes out of the car and gives Mr. Adishola a blow on his face. Fred tries to separate them trying to understand what's going on. Mr. Adishola angrily walks away and Fred angrily asks why Michael behaved that way to one of his biggest clients and how he got to know Sarah. Michael realizes that Sarah must have been the date who ghosted him. He advises Fred to quickly chase after Sarah instead of asking many questions. He runs after Sarah asking what's going on, but Sarah is already frustrated and she just wants to be left alone. She believes that all men are the same and out of annoyance, she narrates how she saw him kissing another girl after their perfect date. Fred sighs and explains that it was Vera and she's like a sister to him because she is Michael's sister. He couldn't just leave her there after seeing her in her drunken state. The whole thing seems to be exhausting for Sarah. So, she walks away from him tired of the whole drama going on. The next day, Michael, his client Laura, Joy, and Sarah all meet for an indoor photo shoot. Mrs. Joy applauds Sarah and advises her not to underestimate her contribution to the set. She wonders why she looks unhappy despite having everything going well for her and urges her to confide in her. After sharing her confusion about the issue with Fred, Mrs. Joy advises her to make a decision that will make her happy for a lifetime. At the end of the photo shoot session, all the models and Lara pack up their bags and take their leave. Sarah and Michael are alone. After chatting for a little while, she asks him to tell her more about Fred. She wants to know if he's a violent person or not as she wouldn't want to experience a violent relationship again. He teases her for making his friend go head over heels. 
he jokingly accuses her of using black magic on his friend before assuring her that Fred is never the kind of guy to lift his hand on a woman. He has known Fred all his life. And he knows he will never do such. He teases her some more, while she picks up her phone, and sends a text to Fred requesting to see him. He drops her off at her place. She invites him in to come to check out a few designs she made. Inside the house, Michael and Sarah continue chatting, while she drops off her bags. Mr. Adeshola suddenly walks in through the door and hits a hammer on Michael's head. Sarah screams and runs upstairs. He makes sure that Michael isn't going to get up before proceeding upstairs to meet Sarah. He drags her by her neck as he takes her down the stairs. Fred walks into the house and sees his friend lying almost lifeless on the floor and his client holding Sarah by her neck. He furiously throws a blow at Mr. Adeshola, and the both of them engage in a serious fight as they struggle to overpower each other. Sarah gets a kettle and hits it on Adeshola's head, causing him to fall flat to the ground. The both of them run to revive Michael. After successfully getting him to stand on his feet, Sarah embraces Fred thankful that their paths crossed. He kisses her lightly and holds on to her embrace a bit longer. A year later, Lizzie is pregnant with Michael's child, and Sarah and Fred's love has blossomed beautifully. The four friends are in Michael's studio, having a nice time as Michael takes photos of Lizzie and her baby bump. She jumps on him, and they soon start playing, while Sarah turns to face her man, and they kiss each other lovingly. <laughs>